Now to our latest Scripps News investigation. Children exposed to deadly opioids and warning signs going overlooked, putting kids back in danger. Lori Jane Gleha reports. A child is rushed to the hospital after overdosing on fentanyl. You'd think that would be a huge red flag. And then it happened again and again. Our Scripps News investigation uncovers specific gaps in child protective services around the country that are putting children right back in harm's way. I remember how I used to push him on the swing. He loved to slide. I miss my grandbaby. Mitchell Robinson was only a few weeks short of his third birthday when he died in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in 2022. I remember bargaining with God sitting there. Take my life. Give him his life back. His grandmother, Stephanie Robinson, says he was rushed to the hospital two separate times in the months leading up to his death. She thought her grandson was suffering from seizures. It wasn't until after his death and the autopsy was done that we learned the truth. The truth was it was fentanyl poisoning that ultimately killed her grandson. The boy's mother pleaded not guilty to a second degree murder charge in connection with his death and remains in jail awaiting trial. Stephanie Robinson says she believes state child welfare workers failed her grandson. I learned that these agencies who were supposed to be involved were notified of what was going on and did nothing. On April 12th, 2022, his mother first rushed the unresponsive toddler to the hospital. Doctors revived Mitchell with Narcan, a medicine used to reverse an overdose of opioids, including fentanyl. The hospital reported the incident to state child welfare workers, but because the hospital's standard drug test did not screen for fentanyl, it found nothing in his system, so the child returned home. Less than two months later, on June 4th, Mitchell's mother whisked him to the emergency room again, where Mitchell received another life-saving dose of Narcan. What is enough proof to know that a child is overdosed on fentanyl or an opioid? If they respond to Narcan. Dr. Ashley Saucier is a Louisiana-based pediatric emergency physician familiar with this case. She would not talk specifics about Mitchell's care, but says there should be no mystery about what's happening to a child who requires Narcan. Narcan is an opioid antagonist and it has one job. And so if a child responds to Narcan, they suffered from an opioid overdose. Doctors treating Mitchell suspected the same thing, but no caseworker took action to move Mitchell to a safe location. Then on June 26th, Mitchell was rushed back to the hospital. This time, he died. We didn't do enough. We, being the state, didn't do enough to make sure that child was safe. The tragic loss outraged Louisiana State Senator Regina Barrow. She launched hearings and the state agency responsible for child welfare promised change. Every child under three that we get a medical referral from, we see immediately. No questions asked. But Scripps News discovered that new child welfare policy wasn't enough to prevent a very similar situation just a few months later. Police records we obtained show a New Orleans area mom rushed her unconscious baby girl to this local firehouse. Firefighters revived the baby with Narcan, but the child went back home after a drug test came back negative. Then several weeks later, it happened again to the same little girl. Once more, firefighters administered Narcan and the child escaped death. This time, police say the baby tested positive for fentanyl. Senator Barrow hadn't heard of this case until we brought it to her attention. I'm learning that we still have a lot of gaping holes in the whole process. Barrow says she plans to hold another legislative hearing in Louisiana to address this newest case and may even propose legislation regarding the lack of fentanyl screening and standard hospital testing. In our nationwide investigation, Scripps News examined more than 260 fentanyl poisonings among babies, toddlers, and young children. And we found similar questions being raised about hospital drug tests in Maine, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Colorado, and Washington. As Mitchell Robinson's grandmother, Stephanie, works oh, yeah. through her grief, 
She says she finds peace knowing his legacy may help save other young lives. That's my life term goal right now for him to make sure no other child dies. Lori Jangliha, Scripps News, Baton Rouge. Now in Wisconsin, we've had our own rising concerns around kids and fentanyl. Just last year, a 17 month old died after ingesting fentanyl and her parents are now facing charges for her death. New tonight at 10, Sean Gallagher tells her story and explains how this is a growing problem in Milwaukee County. Court documents show 17 month old Aliani Lane had enough fentanyl in her system to kill a full grown adult. It's one of many stories we're starting to see more of in our area of kids unintentionally ingesting a very potent drug. Aliani's parents are both charged with child neglect causing death. According to the criminal complaint, Aliani had over seven times the therapeutic level of fentanyl for a full grown adult. Her death is the most recent in a rising trend of Milwaukee area children dying due to fentanyl poisoning. Looking at medical examiner data, no children died from fentanyl poisoning in 2017 or 18, and then just one in 2019 and 2020 each. But that changed in the last two years. Three kids died in 2021 and five last year, with an average age of six and a half years old. Milwaukee County hasn't seen a child die to fentanyl poisoning in 347 days. It's the longest such streak since 2020 to 2021, when we went a year and a day without a child dying to fentanyl exposure. Reporting in Milwaukee, Sean Gallagher, TMJ4 News.